The next classic Hollywood sound effect to get the Mythbusters treatment is the gun silencer. And down at the South San Francisco Police Department shooting range, the boys mean business. Q Meyer Sound Senior Audio Scientist, Dr. Roger Schwenke. With several previous appearances on the show, he gets the much sought after title of Honorary Mythbuster. Stroke bot, baby. <laughs> And today, he's brought along his laboratory-grade recording and analysis equipment. We want to see whether these things actually make the same sounds in real life that they do in the movies. Or do they make any sound at all? How do these silencers work? Well, they're kind of like mufflers on cars. They've got a series of baffles in them that sort of slow down and redirect the gases that are passing through and absorb a lot of the energy and the sound. That's how silencers silence. But outside a movie theater, what exactly are they used for? Look, we would be remiss if we didn't explain that this is not an assassin's tool. Actually, military and law enforcement love suppressors for four main reasons. The extra weight out at the front of the gun actually reduces both muzzle lift and the recoil of the gun, making it easier to aim and stay on target. Uh, it does actually reduce the sound and the concussion, the blast of the bullet, and it also reduces the muzzle flash to zero, all of which makes this a safer and easier weapon to use. Right, let's get down to testing. First up, Adam and Jamie take aim at a baseline. First, we are going to fire an unmodified pistol at the target. And three, two, one. Then, we're going to put a silencer on that gun and shoot again at the target and compare the silenced round sound to the original gun sound and to the movie sound effect of a silencer. <laughs> holding a silenced pistol. It's just as cool as you think it is. Now for the suppressor. Is the movie version anything like reality? Thank you. Do silences work as well in real life as they do on film? That's nice. That was pretty cool. That seemed a lot quieter than I thought it would. And Jamie's 9mm pistol is equally surprising. It's an impressive improvement, but for analysis, let's hear from our expert acoustician. First, decibels, a measure of the intensity of the sound pressure. So we go from 161 and then suppressed, we go down to 128. That's a big change. That goes from dangerous to your hearing to safe. But it's not just the power. The texture and time signature of the sound is also altered. Can we hear them? Here's the unsuppressed. Okay, now let's hear suppressed. <laughs> yeah, that tells the story. And it's a story worth hearing again. A story with a surprise ending. I swear, I went into this one thinking this would be completely busted. I'm kind of blown away. But what about the all-important movie version? How does that stack up? Can we hear the uh, Hollywood sound? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Dude, that is far out. Far out indeed. But although it's not quite identical, the real-life suppressor does reduce the volume of the gunshot to Hollywood levels. And that's enough to impress Adam. A lot. One of the most common questions we get is, are we surprised by the results that we come up with on the show? Today monstrously surprised. I arrived at work this morning expecting that we would completely bust the myth that you could possibly suppress the sound of a bullet anywhere close to what the movies would lead you to believe. And I leave today being a convert to the idea this thing is totally plausible. The only reason I'm not calling it confirmed is because instead of a choo -choo sound like they do in the movies, I'm shooting my cameraman's knees out here, uh, it's more like a poof, poof sound. But that is picking nits as far as I'm concerned. This is astonishing. 